السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اسٹوڈنٹس ونس اگین وی آر ہیئر ٹو ڈسکس دا چیپٹر ہیریڈیٹی اینڈ ایولیوشن ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ہیڈ ڈسکس اباؤٹ ہیریڈیٹی اینڈ ان دیٹ آئی ہیو ٹاٹ یو واٹ از ہیریڈیٹی اینڈ ہاؤ دس heredity occurs from one generation to another generation and how this heredity can be understood on molecular basis there are three steps which we had discussed in the last lecture let me recall you the first transcription second translation third translocation and after this we had begin with evolution i gave you brief idea about evolution evolution which means gradual changes that had taken place in the organisms starting from the unicellular organisms living in water body and it happened long back and as i said you it's a theory which we believers have no faith in it as far as it is a part of syllabus so we are discussing it nothing else more than that so this evolution theory had some evidences to support it i gave you the six names to memorize i hope all of you have memorized them the first one let us recall again those all six name the first evidence morphological evidence second anatomical evidences third yes what was the third one yeah vestigial organs right fourth it was paleontological evidences fifth connecting links and the sixth one embryological evidence so today we are going to discuss all these evidences one by one so let us start with morphological evidences so you must know first what is morphology morphology is the study of physical appearance of any living organism in morphology we have to understand what this word morphology means it is made up of morph and logy morph which means form physical appearance physical characteristic when you study physical characteristics of any organism whether it is plant or any living being we call it as morphology so in morphological evidences there were several organisms which look similar look similar in what in their physical appearances now you can see in the examples some examples which are given up, up beside to me over there you can see the nose of animals are similar to each other okay the hairy structure over their body similar to each other then we can see some examples of plants the leaves look similar to each other which all suggest that physical appearance of all these plants and animals are similar which means that they are originated from some common ancestors so this is what morphological evidence and how it supports evolution theory now let us come to the second evidence which means anatomical evidence So in anatomical evidence the word comes anatomical which is derived from anatomic it's a biological term anatomy the study of anatomy means when you study any living organism about its internal structure it's called as anatomy so in anatomical study any organisms about its bone when you study about its bone its structure which is it is made up of its constituent how it is made up of it's called its anatomical study so in the given example you can see the hands of bull or an ox the hands of human being the legs of cat or the flipper of whale they all look similar in bony structure their bones look somewhat similar to each other so this suggests again this all animals have similar bone structure internal structure 
which mean again they all are originated from some common ancestor again it supports theory of evolution now let us come to the third evidence that is vestigial organ now here one must know what is vestigial organ so vestigial organ mean any organ in a body or a group of cell which we call as tissue the one which have no function at all those are functionless and they are just present in a body so these organs are called as vestigial organs and this vestigial organ as well support theory of evolution how for example in human being there exists appendix okay and this appendix is called as vestigial organ for human beings but at the same time this appendix is also found in ruminants animal whereas in ruminant animals this appendix is useful for them they help them for in the process of rumination which finally leads to the digestion proper digestion of food what they eat but in human beings this appendix have no function it is just present okay it is just present apart between small intestine and large intestine so it have no function it's just present so it's one kind of vestigial organ next the other example which can give which you can give for vestigial organ is the presence of tailbone that is coccyx in human beings just below the vertebral column there exists fused bone called as tailbone or a coccyx which have no function but the same coccyx or the tailbone have great function in monkeys right so in monkeys this coccyx is playing great role for them they help them in moving from one place to another place or hanging over the branches of tree so it's useful for them but it's useless to us so it's one example of vestigial organ and again the presence of vestigial organ in human beings suggests that we human beings have been originated from the common ancestor or as that of monkeys or as that of ruminants so this is somewhere we get linked to each other now come let us come to the fourth evidences of evolution that is paleontological evidences so here we must need to understand what is paleontology first we understand what the meaning of paleontology the meaning of paleontology is the study of fossil fuels the living organism which got crap or crap inside the earth long back their impressions are were found on the rocky surfaces so these impressions are called as fossils the, these are the remnants of those living organism whether it's plants or animals they got trapped under the rocky surfaces the reason may be due to anything any environmental calamities which had taken place long back and that lead to their trap under this rocky surface and this fossil fuels are studied under the paleontology and in this we can understand how the living organisms were of different different era okay the one which is found you can see the example the one which were found at very beneath the level of the earth surface they were of the most previous era and so on the levels were divided okay so here we can understand the one which were found that at the top level they were derived from the one or they were derived from the one which is below to them okay and this goes on and goes on which prove again one of the evidence and that support call as paleontological evidence and that support the theory of evolution so this is one of the theory what you have to remember about paleontology evidences paleontological evidence you have to remember about the study of paleontology is called as the study of fossil fuels and what are fossil fuels these are the remnants of living organism which got trapped long back due to various natural calamities those living organism can be plants or animals and how link they are linked to each other with the previous living organisms of different era now let's come to the fifth again most important evidences of evolution the fifth one is connecting link so here in connecting link what we have to understand the word says you something connecting link so there are group of organisms which are linked between the other two organism the best example one can give for this is duct bill platypus so duct bill platypus have the features of 
mammals as well as the features of apes okay or the reptiles here they have the hair structure over their body okay at the same time they lay eggs so here the characteristics of both reptiles and mammals are found in duckbill platypus so what duckbill platypus is called as it's called as connecting link between mammals and reptiles okay as it have the features of both the animals so connecting links also support the theory of evolution which suggests that someone got created or the evolved from the earlier one and this duckbill platypus have the characteristics of both the group of animals now let us come to the last theory or last evidence that is called embryological evidences now here the word comes embryology the embryology what we have to understand the meaning of embryology is study of embryo what is embryo the embryo is formed when the gametes get united at the, in, during the process of fertilization so when get union of gametes leads to the formation of embryo and this embryo later develops into fetus before birth whatever the group of organ cells the gamete is called as embryo so embryology is the study of embryo of different organism so as you can see in the example beside to me the embryos of different animals whether it's of whether it's of chicken whether it's of man whether it's of salamander or crocodile they look same so here embryological evidence also suggests that how initial stages of embryos are looking similar again it's proved that somewhere they are linked to common ancestor they originated from common ancestor so number 6 embryological evidence suggests that embryologically all the animals have similar stages first stage second stage and third stage amongst them the first stage looks similar all of them look similar in their first stage of embryo they suggest that they are originated from some common ancestor so this was the last embryological evidence of which proof of which give support to the theory of evolution so let us repeat once again first we had discussed about the first evidence was morphological evidence in that i told you what is morphology then in the second we had discussed about anatomical evidences so we had discussed what is anatomy then in the third we had discussed about vestigial organ fourth one was paleontological evidence fifth was connecting link and the sixth one was embryological evidence so i hope you have understood what is the meaning of all of them memorize them question come on them and go through your textbook read it again if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section give you suggest your doubt inshallah we'll meet in the next session assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh